Amen. Wherever you are right now, I want you to lift your hands in your living room, in whatever room you're in. I want you to lift your hands right now to the Lord. I just want you to pray right now, Lord. I thank you for your spirit that we feel even now. God, I thank you for your presence, God, that is among us. Lord, we thank you right now. Come on, I want you to join me and do that, Lord. We thank you. We honor you for your presence, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, just say that wherever you are right now. Say hallelujah. It means as many praises as I can give to God, I give to him right now. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you for, for joining joining in this morning to our Anchor Church service. Let me be the first to welcome you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Cody. I am the youth pastor here at the Anchor Church. Pastor Bounce has asked me to speak with you for just a few moments before he comes. And so I want to be the first to welcome you and say we are so thrilled that you are here and that you are watching via the web with us, to all of the young people that are out there, to all of the anchor youth that are out there. Let me say that I love you very much and I'm praying for you. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7. I'm going to start with verse 21. I'll give you a moment to get there. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. The Bible says this, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we not cast out devils? And haven't we done many good works in your name? Verse 23, and then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Is it possible this morning, is it possible this morning to do good things and to be a good person and not go to heaven? Scripture says that it is. Scripture says that it's possible. I recently, um, thank you for playing very much. You can be seated if you're standing in your Recently, last night, we, we got a ton of rain. I don't know if you got a lot of rain where you are, but we, uh, we got a ton of rain that just came in, and, and uh, I, was, I was worried about my basement because in my basement there's a, there's a wall that has been showing signs that it needs repaired and some work done. And, uh, and so with the influx of rain, uh, rain has a way of exposing weaknesses in basements, and it, it certainly exposed itself in, in mine. But the, the point I, I want to make to you is this, that just as a basement wall or a, a basement foundation you, is you are only as strong as your weakest point. You can be, you can be a good person. You can do good things. The the wall can be strong, but if there is one place, if there is one hole in that, in that wall, the whole wall has been compromised. So I want to say again, you are only as strong as your weakest point. Does that make the wall unnecessary? Does that make the wall in itself bad? No, it makes it, it makes it, uh, it makes it to where there, there's an issue that has to be solved. There's not... It doesn't mean the whole wall is bad. It means you find the area that's, that's, that, that the issue is and you patch the hole or you solve, you solve the problem. In Acts chapter 5, uh, you can turn there if you want, if you would like to. In Acts chapter 5, the Bible says that there was a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife. They sold a possession and they kept back a part of the price and his wife also being privy to it bought a certain part and laid it at the, at the apostles' feet. You have to understand in Acts chapter 5, many things were happening in the church. A lame man had just been healed, and uh, everybody around knew that this man had been lame for years, and this man was instantly healed. And This man is, 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 is sharing his, his healing with people. Amazing things are happening 
at that time. Uh, the, the message of Jesus Christ was spreading across the land in that day. And, and the Bible says that there was a multitude that believed, that began to sell possessions, that they began to sell what they had to, to ensure that the kingdom of God went forward. But the Bible says in Acts chapter 5 that Ananias and Sapphira, they sold their property and they gave a portion of that to, to uh, further the gospel. I'm not here to talk about money. I'm here to make a point. The, the problem was not that the problem was not that Ananias and Sapphira gave a portion. There was no pro, I can't find an issue with that in Scripture. But what I can find is that the issue was is that they said they gave everything when they were holding on to something. They said they said to the apostles, they announced to the people around, I've given it all, I've done it all right, and yet here they have a stash behind them that nobody, the, the problem was not that they wanted to take care of themselves. The problem was is they presented, they presented themselves as somebody who had given everything when yet there was still something they were hanging on to. You get the point here of, of Acts chapter 5. I, I, I heard somebody say recently, what, what does it feel like to, to be wrong? The point, point I, I, I want to make a point to you here in just a moment. What, what, what does it feel like to be wrong? I heard somebody say this one time. Answer, he, he said it to a group of people around him, and they, they began to say things like, uh, I feel regret. I feel, I feel sorrowful. I feel, I feel this. I feel that. But, but, but none of those things are what you feel when you're wrong. You know what you feel when you're wrong? You feel right. You feel right when you're wrong. The emotions of regret and sorrow and everything else is what you find out, is, is what you feel after you find out that you're wrong. But before you find out you're wrong, it feels right. And so I want to tell you that, 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 that today I, I know I've, I've not come to, 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 to be mean or any of that, but I, but I do want you to know that we cannot say we cannot say that I have presented everything to God when yet there is, there is something left. There's something more. And I've come to preach a message of hope to you this morning that there is more for you. The Bible says in Acts chapter 16 that, that, that if you believe, you will be saved. I would encourage you to read that, Acts 16 and 31. But don't stop there. Read the whole scripture. After The verse after that, Paul said, the, the scripture says that, that he took him, he took the man and, and explained the word more perfectly to him and he was baptized two verses later. There was more to the story than, than just believing. James chapter 2 says that the devils also believe and tremble, but you have to put, you have to put works with your faith. I, I've come to tell you, if you believe in God, I think it's a great thing and it's an amazing thing. And now more than ever, we need to believe in God. But can I tell you that there is more on this Sunday morning than just believing in God as the devils do. You somewhere, you've got to say, God, I have messed up. I have trusted in other things. Uh, I want you to know that I am sorry. I repent of my sins. Uh, oh, and, and, and everyone where everything that I can find in Scripture is all summed up in one verse. When they ask the question, what do we need to do to be saved? You can't, you can't take just one Scripture and make it doctrine, but you can look at this whole book and make it, and make it what, what we know as the gospel today. And here's what we find the gospel is. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, Peter stands up with the other 11 disciples and he says, repent. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What good is the wall if there's holes in it? What good is the basement if every time the flood comes, every time the water comes, the rain pours down, every time there's, there's, there's leaks, there's, there's, there's things coming through. Let me tell you, let me tell you right now. 
today, the Bible says, is the day of salvation. There is hope for you. You're tuning in. You're watching. We've come to preach the word of God. I can't save you. My words can't save you. A church building can't save you. But the word of God can save you. And if you will repent, if you will turn from your from your ways, from your wrongdoing, if you'll be baptized in the name of Jesus and you will receive the Holy Ghost, the Bible says that he will be with you. For the Bible says that the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, the Father will send in my name. They received it in Acts chapter 2. They received it all throughout the New Testament and they are receiving it by the thousands still today. To date, millions of people have received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Ghost. So I don't know where you are, but I've come to tell you there's a gift for you. Fill the holes in your life. Amen. And get right with God. I want you to lift your hands where you are right now and just call out to God and say, I need you, Lord. I want to do everything that I know to do to be right with you. Come on, that's it. I want you to pray for just a moment. Praise the Lord, everybody. Go ahead and magnify the Lord right now. Lord, we love you and we praise your magnificent, wonderful name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor Cody, for a tremendous word today leading us. So glad to hear from our youth pastor today. What an amazing preacher. Certainly feel the anointing of God. So thankful for that. There are things happening right now. Even though COVID-19 has us not able to assemble, there's less than 10 people in this building here today as we put this service on for you and as we come to worship the Lord and gather together from all over the region here, we're so glad that we can still feel the presence of Almighty God. Amen, amen. This coming week you will be hearing from Pastor Nehemiah Gators. You're going to be hearing on Wednesday night a song that, that he and Brother Michael Croston have, have written it's going to be our worship song before Wednesday night Bible study. Also, you'll be hearing him preach this coming week, and we're so thankful for his ministry and our pastoral staff. If you would turn with me to the book of Luke, Luke chapter 17. We're going to read from verse 28, Luke 17 and verse 28. I want to, while you're turning there, please take time to get your Bible out and read along. We're going to be reading from 1 Thessalonians 5. Verse 9, Genesis chapter 19, and uh, today in our, in our verses for this message today. To th this morning, as I do in the spring, when the mornings are warm, and uh, spring's my favorite time of year, and uh, I got up early this morning, made me a cup of coffee, uh, went out on the porch and then decided to walk out to the back of my house, and this time of year, the fruit trees uh, start blooming, and I went out and was walking some, around some of the, the uh, peach trees and apple trees and pear trees. I noticed this morning while the peaches are blooming pink, I uh, looked at pear trees that have not bloomed since probably for nine years. White blooms are on those large pear trees that I planted. And uh, when I stepped out of the fruit tree orchard that I've worked and preached about for a long time here, uh, when I stepped out, I received a text from Brother Bobby Wade, who I believe is a prophet of the Lord. And he said, God showed me in a dream this morning blooming fruit trees. He said, I saw the white blooms on those fruit trees. And, uh, of course, you know what my mind went to. I had just walked out from fruit trees when I received this text. I believe it was a word for us. He made a statement to me in that text that he sent me. He said, I had a dream, and he said, I saw beautiful blooms on the fruit trees. And he said, when I was admiring that, I looked on the edge of the fruit trees, and there were hornets' nests. And he said, I looked down, and there was a can of hornet spray, and I knew I could kill those hornets. And he said, I went to grab the hornet spray and went to spray it. But when I did, he said, the voice spoke to me and said, don't mess with the hornets. You do have power over the hornets, but people are going to be stung if you start messing with them. He said the Lord began to reveal to him how hornets pollinate the fruit trees. And he said God revealed to him that the COVID-19 or the coronavirus is like the hornets among the harvest. He said we have to be very careful 
because we do understand we have power over diseases. But if we try to take power over this, people will be stunned. He said, do not become distracted by the COVID-19. While we must remain powerful, we are. He said, we must remain wise. That's why I'm preaching to an empty building here today. And I think this proves that the church is not a building. The building is where the church gathers to worship. But as I preached some weeks ago that we don't only worship him. I believe it was prophetic looking back. And I preached on a Sunday morning, praise him in a sanctuary. On a Sunday night, I preached on praise him in the firmament of his power. God is not limited to 1365 Chamberlain Street. And yes, while we are powerful and we have power over sickness and disease, he said, the Lord said, through this we must remain wise. But do not be distracted by the disease and think that the church is over or the church is paused. He said, the harvest is right now. We must still reach, we must still preach. As a matter of fact, if you will, take a moment to share your Facebook Live, share right now if you can, to all of those people that are you are connected to so they can hear the gospel preached today. It is an easy way to share the gospel by simply allowing your live stream uh, or your Facebook Live to be shared among those that are connected to you. And by the way, for all of those Anchor Church members, we're so glad you've joined. For all of those that are guests here today, we are so glad that you have joined us. My text comes from Luke 17 and verse 28. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, as it was in the days of Lot, he said, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. What is this talking about? This is talking about as in the days of the Son of Man will be revealed. What does it say? He said, things continue to go on. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Even Will it be as the day when the Son of Man is revealed? I'd like to preach for just a few moments here on simply before Jesus comes. Before Jesus comes. The, the statements that are, are going around right now is, uh, are statements like, is this the end? Is the coming of the Lord near? I think there's been an awakening. People have, have been shaken where they are. I've had people that I haven't heard from in a while call in and say, I need prayer, I need God, I want to be right with God. Today, there are more people going to be baptized. Two days ago, I baptized two people in Jesus' name. People are stirred in their soul wanting to be right with the Lord. Why? They're at home. They're not, their minds aren't busy with, with work and vacations. They really can't go anywhere. And people are listening right now and thinking, is my heart right with God? I believe the Lord is stirring people. We started a revival on Friday night. It continued last night, 7 p.m., with the teaching of Brother Raymond Woodward, and he's teaching on the end, when shall it be. So powerful, such great teaching. And it will continue tonight, the last part of the series tonight at 6 p.m. We ask you to join in. I have to say, it's brought a lot of questions in my home. My children sitting around and listening to that. We have, they've been asking questions about who can go, who's going to make it, when is the tribulation, all these type of conversations. And that's the goal is to spark interest so you can get understanding of when is the Lord coming, when is the second coming of the Lord, when will tribulation start. And I want to touch on some of that today and let you understand by going back to Genesis 19, if we will, we'll go back to Genesis 19 because Jesus taught that when the son, of the son of Man shall be revealed, speaking of Jesus will be revealed, that it's going to be just like the days of Lot during Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's look back and look what it says. In, in Genesis 19, just referencing, God had revealed to Abraham that he was going, going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sin. And uh, the angel told him to begin to intercede and pray. And he began to... Ask God, Lord, if there's 50 righteous, will you spare the city? And the Lord said, I'll do it. Went all the way down 
He said, if there's ten righteous, will you spare the city? And God said, I will spare the city if there's ten righteous. It's sad, but in all of Sodom and Gomorrah, there were not even ten righteous people. They didn't even know that judgment was coming. But God sent because of an intercessor. God sent. I believe Abraham represents the, the elect or the church. He began to intercede for that city and his family that was there. Because of that, the Lord sent two angels to Lot's house. And he went in and he said, you got to get out of here. And we know how, how there was such rampant sin that you can read about in the scripture. I don't even want to talk about it here today because it's not my subject. Sin was going on. Uh, busy lifestyles were going on. They were planting. They were, they were starting businesses. They were, they were giving in marriage. They were eating. They were going to the restaurants. Things were just normal going on in Sodom and Gomorrah as usual. But the angel said, came and said, Lot, we've got to take you and your family out of here. And look at verse 12. Before the wrath could come or before they would be taken away, let me stop here and say that I believe as Lot and his two children were taken out of Sodom and Gomorrah, it's like the rapture. We are going to be taken out of this land before the wrath can come, which would be what? The seven years of tribulation. You do not want to be here. I've had people over the years tell me that, hey, when the Lord comes and the rapture takes place, I know I'm not living right. I know I'm not right. But after that, I will give my head. I, I will stay a believer. Let me tell you something. If you can't live for God now, you are not going to live for God in the tribulation. Don't be deceived. Don't let the devil deceive you. you. You need to live for God right now. If your heart's not right, those that are watching saying, well, one of these days I'm going to go back to church, you're, you're going to miss it by putting off tomorrow what you should do right now. We heard in the teaching the imminent return of the Lord. Listen, don't turn me off right now. I want you to hear what I'm going to tell you. It's going to be very positive. Before I get to that, you need to understand the imminent return of the Lord causes us to fear God because I'm not going to do this because what if he comes? Oh, sin, life at the door can be very tempting for us to do things, walking away from God as I've seen people do. But if your mind is that God can come any moment, it causes us to say no to this old flesh. Oh, this flesh that is so carnal in its ways. Paul said, when I would do good, evil is present with me. I come to tell you, don't wait till we start services up before you get your heart right with God. If you have backslid and walked away from the Lord, let me tell you, you can pray in your house. It doesn't matter how far you are away from God. You can bend your knee and say, God, I need you. And I promise you, when you call upon the name of the Lord, he's going to save you. God, change my heart. David made a statement when the preacher pointed his finger and said, Thou art the man. You know what David did? He fell to his knees. And he said, I acknowledge my sin. My transgressions are forever before me. Lord, cast me not away from thy presence. Lord, wash me with his so that I might be clean. That's what he said. Create in me a clean heart. Heart, renewing me a right spirit I'm preaching to you right now it doesn't matter who you are how far you are away from the Lord just one call upon his name and he could change everything in your world because it is the measure of his mercy amen you look in scripture and the Bible tells us very clearly that his mercies are renewed every morning Praise God, the sun come up this morning giving you another opportunity. And I come to tell you, before he comes, he's still forgiving. Before he comes, the gospel is still effective. Before he comes, what he did at Calvary can make a difference in your life. Before he comes, he has not come yet, which means everything you did at the cross is still in effect. Everything you did, everything that he's done, at the Calvary, a man is still working right now before he comes. And I come to tell you that anything can happen. Anything can happen. Praise God. Whatever you need, the Lord can do. I come to tell you God can heal you. Brother Donnie Crum, come in this uh, foyer, needing prayer, blood clot that was uh, in his lungs. And there was fear because his father passed away from that. His grandfather passed away from that. Amen. And uh, he came to the church for prayer. He was desperate for a miracle. I'm glad to tell you when we call on the name of Jesus, he was healed by the power of the name of Jesus. I remember when his wife Sandy came in before church, she was in pain with her kidneys. 
This is several months ago. She said, I need healing. She was discouraged because of the pain. Before church ever started, we called on the name of the Lord and instantly God healed her of her kidney issues. God is not limited uh, by us not having church service here. I want you to know that he can heal you right there in your living room. He can heal you of any disease. He can heal you of cancer. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, you're going to see um, a video that we're putting out called Miracle Moments that I'm talking about miracles that I've seen. You're going to hear those. I want you to know those can still happen. Livers, kidneys, heart valves, brain tumors. It doesn't matter what it is. God is able. I want you to say it in your home. God is able. I want you to say it again. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. That verse is still in effect before he comes. He hasn't come yet. He has not come yet, which means you can receive your miracle. I'm glad to tell you that, that the blessings of giving are still in effect. That does not pause because of COVID-19. People have been texting me and saying, Pastor, a lot of people have got laid off, but I was able to keep my job. Sister Mary Williams called me this week and she said, I just want you to know. She said, I gave my God's house offering and the next day I received a check, an unexpected check in the mail for more than I gave to the God's house. Why? Because the principles of God's word do not change when there's a pandemic. God does not pause. The church does not pause. Don't put off tomorrow what God's calling you to do now. You can pray. You can be healed. You can give. You can and receive because whatever God's doing does not stop before he comes. It's a different story after he comes. As we heard in the teaching, man, I'm fired up, stirred today. The Lord has spoken to me for this service. Amen. There's prophecy, so much prophecy about what he's doing. There's a harvest in North America right now where millions are going to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He's coming soon. I believe we're in the season of it. But before he comes, there's going to be millions in all over North America that are going to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And it will be followed by a revelation of the name of Jesus. Amen. For some time, I've had an expectation of something like this. Please, I tell the church, do not limit God to a Sunday and a Wednesday. The Lord is going to quicken your spirit. He's going to drop names into your spirit to pray for and to witness to. And see, that's what happened. As it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be when the Son of Man shall be revealed. As it was in the days of Lot, the angels came to Lot in verse 12. And look what it says, Genesis 19 and 12. And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides? Are there, are there any in this city besides you? Look what it says. Son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. He said, do you have any family that's not in your house? Is there anyone that's not in the house? I'd like to say to you, how many of you have family that's not in the house of God? How many of you that have loved ones, a brother, a sister, an uncle, an aunt, maybe a grandparent, somebody that's not right with God? He said, you need to get them out of this place. Out of what? Out of the place where judgment's coming. The Bible says that he's coming back in a flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall come to be glorified in the saints. But I want you to understand that those that are left behind are going to have to deal with the wrath of God, with the tribulation. Look what it says. Verse 13 for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. Remember when Noah came out of the flood and got off the boat? And I preached a while back about Noah's altar. Do you remember a, a rainbow came in the sky? The Bible says a bow in the sky. It was a token as a covenant that said, I will never destroy the earth again with water. And that was comforting until he said, but it will be fire the next time. 
It is written in scripture. You see it as it was in the days of Lot. There is going to come a wrath of God, a molten heat. There's going to come uh, the vengeance of God, the scripture says that, upon those that obey not, those that put off, those that heard the gospel but didn't obey it. There's a difference in hearing it and obeying it. There really is. It's not good enough to hear the gospel. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Listen, the gospel is no effect if you're not obeying it. The word of God is no effect in your life if there's no obedience to it. Back into the scripture, he says in verse 14, And Lot went out, notice, and spake. Let me, let me word it this way with our theme again this year is reach. And Lot went out and reached for his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get thou out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. Judgment's coming. Do you see the, the Bible calls him preacher Lot? Another verse calls him just Lot. He was a just man. And he came and he told them, you got to come out. you got to come out of this world. That's the same message being preached right now. Come out from the world and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. And I believe what's happening right now, we're being shaken as, as I preached the first Sunday after this, is, is reevaluate what is it that really matters in your life. Does salvation matter to you? Does holiness matter to you? Does being right with God matter? If the Lord would come right now, where would you go? God would come right now. I plead with you. Because he hasn't come yet. I plead with you as a preacher. And if he wouldn't come, if he would come tonight, would you go? I preached just before one Sunday before this deal. I preached on if Jesus would come tonight. I preached a hard message. Is your heart right with God? Because if your heart's not right, nothing else matters. I'm going to tell you, tell you in reality. The house, the car, the overtime, the vacations, all that. Nothing matters in eternity. All that matters is your heart. The old song says, I'm keeping my record white. I'm watching both day and night. I'm getting ready to leave this world. Oh, you got to, you, there's another song that says, uh, talks about when the redeemed are gathering in. Washed like snow and free from sin. I will shout and I will sing, oh, when the redeemed are gathering in. In. Have you been redeemed? Or are you putting it off? You're waiting on some other opportunity. I'm telling you, God has brought an opportunity to this nation. He really has. It's time to get your heart right with the Lord. Watch what it says in verse 14. It says, you need to come out of this city, but he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. They could not hear him. They were so engrossed with the busyness of Sodom and Gomorrah, they thought he was just like Noah. They didn't believe the end was near. It's going to be the same way. It's going to be like a thief in the night. It's going to be a surprise. But when Jesus comes, people are going to be shocked. I can't believe it happened because they're so engrossed in the world that they can't even see the signs of the time. Oh, you look at Israel 72 years ago. September, 72 years ago in September. It was established as a nation. My kids asked last night, even Finn said, Daddy, do you know what day the Lord's coming? Do you know? And I said, no. Do you know what month? No. But I do know we are in the season. That's why it says when you see the tree bring forth the leaves. That's, that's a season. There's times when fig trees don't have leaves. That's a season. We know the season of his coming. And God has warned us, even in this right now, God has warned us that he's coming. Now, I want to give hope to everybody watching right now. Because I hear people say, well, will we have to endure wrath? Will we have to endure those types of things? And uh, let me show you a verse in this. As it, I want everybody at home to say, as it was in the days of Lot. Look at verse 22. The angel come down after Lot was rejected. His gospel preaching, if you will, was rejected by his family. Listen, it's, it's not us, up to us to not preach the gospel because somebody might reject us. The Bible says Jesus was despised and rejected. But the problem is going to be if you did not reach for them. Are you reaching for people? Now look, back on the point. Look what it says in verse 22. The angel says, haste thee, escape thither, or, or escape to there. 
for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. He said, I cannot bring the wrath. I cannot destroy this city while you are still here. Do you see that? Well, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9. Let's read it. Turn to your Bibles. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9. If you've ever heard this, it's pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, post-tribulation. There's a lot of debate about that. The United Pentecostal Church takes a stand on pre-tribulation. Elders in my life believe that as well. Pre-tribulation. I believe that as well. That the, that the coming of the Lord will happen before the tribulation. We heard that taught last night. That once the rapture takes place or the coming of the Lord, the angel sounds a trumpet, what happens at that moment is that it starts. The clock of seven years of tribulation begins. Those left behind will have to go through seven years of tribulation and the plagues will be released out. Revelation tells us that, that those ten plagues of Egypt are going to be released into the land. You've never seen such terrible time as the wrath of God in the seven years of tribulation. First Thessalonians, this is the verse uh, I believe. First Thessalonians, uh, let me get to my notes here. 5 verse 9, it says, For God hath not appointed us to what? To wrath. God has not appointed us to wrath. That means there is no appointment for us in the wrath of God. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. What have we been appointed to? To be saved. And another verse says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? And to think that all you have to do is repent of your sins, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost, with the initial evidence of speaking with other tongues, to be born again as the scripture calls it. And to think that for all of those that once lived for God, that are watching right now, that didn't, that all the only thing you have to do is get on your knees and truly give your heart back to him to be ready. I would not wait another day if I was you. I would not. I really wouldn't. And so before he comes, there's going to be no wrath. Before he comes, the judgment of the Lord is not going to be released upon the, up the land. Before he comes, that is not going to happen. But here's what I preach as I come to a close right now. But before he comes, you have an opportunity to reach everyone in your world. The angel said, before I bring the wrath, the angel said, before I take you out of the city, because I cannot bring judgment to the city while you are here, you've got to go to the mountain. He said, you need to go reach your family. Everyone that's not in the house, you need to go reach them. You need to reach them. Remember that list you made for Easter? I'm not sure if we'll have Easter. It looks like we're not having Easter service at this point. But I'm tell you what, the church is still alive. And please understand right now that God is giving you a space of grace to reach everyone in your life that you want to be saved. I know what it's like. There was a moment in my life there was somebody in my world that was very dear to me that was not right with God. I pleaded and I begged and I interceded for them. And I did. And I'll never forget a, a preacher. His name was Terry Noel. He come walking down the aisle. And he pointed at me. He said, the Lord has heard your prayer. And God is going to save that person. In that service, the person I had been pleading for ran to the altar and repented of their sins. And I'm glad to tell you today, they are a, they are a preacher of the gospel because I was interceding. I was praying and seeking the face of God. I believe you have that type of power. You believe God hears your prayer? Oh, I believe he hears our prayer. Yes. And before he comes... He requires us to pray for all saints with all prayer and all supplication, Ephesians 6 tells us. Are you praying for people that used to be here, that used to be in the house? Before he comes, people are going to be healed. I want to end on this point right now. Let me say this first. Reach your family. Reach your neighbor. Reach people and friends in your life. God has called you to reach. Let me tell you what he wants you to do, though, to understand. God is not limited to healing you or your friends right here with the elders as James 5.14 says any sick among you let them call for the elders of the church and anoint you with oil here's what God's going to do all over North America if we'll believe this he liked the centurion he said just speak the word you don't have to come to my house speak the word and my soldier will be healed you believe that? I believe right now whatever disease you have in your life 
that I can speak the word from this pulpit, this old wooden, doesn't match the decor of pulpit that I'm behind right now. I've had a lot of people tell me I need to change this. I've held on to this because this is the one I planted the first church with in Crooksville. We'll probably update, but listen to me. There's an old gospel. There's an old anointing. There's, a, there's an old God, the ancient of days, that has never weakened with time. And when I say the name of Jesus over your life, he can heal you right where you are. What is it? I want you to lift your hands in your home. If you have sickness, if you have pain in your body, watch before he comes. Calvary, Isaiah 53, he was wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him by his stripes. We are healed. Because he has not come, healing is still in place. How about the headache, the insomnia, the depression, the fear? Whatever you're dealing with today, God can heal you. He can right now. If you believe it, I just want you to lift your hands and say, God, I'm asking for mercy. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy. When they prayed for healing, they would pray for mercy. You see, before he comes, there's still mercy. Mercy to forgive. Mercy to heal. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Come on, lift your hands and pray right now all over the room, all over the place where you are. Lift your hands, every one of you. In the name of Jesus, we pray for healing. We pray for mercy. God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want you to tell the Lord vocally what you want God to do. I want you to tell him right now what you need him to do. You can put it in your on, on Facebook Live what you need prayer for. Then we're expecting a, a response that's going to talk about you felt healing come over your body. If it's cancer, God can heal cancer. If it's COVID-19, God can, God can heal that right now. We saw a man, said the vice president prayed for him and he was healed. We believe God can do that. We're praying for you right now. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus. No matter what country you're from, no matter where you're at right now, in the name of Jesus. By the authority of the word of God and the power of the name of Jesus. I bind every sickness in Jesus' name. I bind every infirmity, every spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. I bind a kidney disease and blood clots and degenerative disc. I bind liver disease and cancer, migraine headaches and pain throughout the body. I bind neuropathy. I bind those things in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever has been named today, oh God, you're not limited to healing on a Sunday or Wednesday. Oh no. The gospel was preached everywhere. God, and I know that healing always followed the gospel. And I pray healing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus. I pray for every marriage that's struggling. I pray for every child that has an octave right. I pray for every family that's been in discord. Oh, God, before you come, the gospel is still in effect. The power of the cross is still moving. In Jesus' name, you're here. Oh, God. Oh, God. Many of you are going to call neighbors and pray, and they're going to be healed. That's right. God's going to use his body to spread the gospel. He's going to use his body to bring healing and miracles. Let's take a moment and worship and thank God for his word. Would you do that? Lift your hands in your living room, wherever you're at, in the name of Jesus. Lead us in song. <laughs> I must be saved. to do to me don't let me 
let me explain to every follower if we're not being unwise and baptizing people I realize that can be concerning to some of you we feel like we're obeying scripture I do not feel like we're being disobedient uh, by not having church service but I do believe we are obeying the word we've been very cautious very careful because the Bible says they took them the very same hour baptize them if you're watching today you want to be baptized you want to be led through repentance you need prayer call 740-453-8620 and we will contact you or receive your phone call people have been messaging through Facebook uh, website uh, you can send an email we want to pray with you. We realize you're not in the building. Altar workers aren't here. But we will work with you on the phone. We will pray with you. If someone just contacted yesterday and said, I want to be right with God. I need to have my sins washed away. Get ready to baptize two people here in just a little while. We'll be very safe. We make sure that we have hand sanitizer. But I'm going to tell you, we believe God has protected us in this to obey his gospel and to lead people. If you need to baptized, if you need to repent, I want you to call right now, 740-453-8620. If you need prayer, if you're one of the saints of God that say, hey, I'd like prayer. Somebody called me yesterday. We'll pray with you. Because the church is not paused with COVID-19. It's been mobilized, and more than ever before, it's been activated. You have power to get a hold of God from your home. I've taught you for years. Your home is a little church building to where you can worship God because you're the church. Lay hands on your children, moms and dads, and pray with them. Pray them through the Holy Ghost. Have a repentance service in your home and say, let's be right with God. We got out of balance with life. Let's be right with God. The Lord's coming. Your little eight-year-olds and seven-year-olds are not stirred in the heart thinking about the rapture. But before he comes, there's an open door, open window. Biblical warning signs. Backsliders are calling in and said, everything I was ever taught, I'm seeing it come to pass. You're exactly right. Get a hold of God. We want to get a hold of God with you. In Jesus' name, I just feel to pray again. Lord, in Jesus' name, I pray for every, watch, every viewer, every saint, every backslider, any sinners that may be tuned in wondering if God could ever forgive them. Yes. His blood will wash you as white as snow. He'll remove every stain in your garment, every saint of God that's been fearful. Don't be fearful. The Lord is with you. I pray, God, for great strength, great power, and great anointing. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. You can